Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and yes, this is a empty bottle of gin, as most bottles of gin in my house tend to be. But what's really cool about this is, now this isn't a cheap bottle of gin by any means, but this is a gin called number three, and uh, it's got its own batch number there and still number. I mean, it's a, it's a premium gin, this one. But what's really cool is it's got this key on the front. Now, I don't know if it's plastic or not, it's probably some pot metal, doesn't appear to be magnetic, um, but it doesn't sound like plastic. Now, I was looking at that and thinking, well, it's very handsome and looks nice in the bottle, but I have another one of these bottles downstairs, so if this one gets damaged, then I'm not going to be too upset. Now, why would I damage the bottle? Well, if I extract that key, I was just curious, would it actually work in something like one of these uh, latch locks? Now, these are odd locks to say the least. Um, there you go. They open and close, you find these on a lot of sheds in the UK, and they look like they've got wards. Let me just open the back of this one up, just for a second, and I'll show you what's actually inside. There we go, there is no warding. All that you're doing, and I need to probably hold this in place while I um, get the key and show you what it's like from the other side, but if I put the key in like this, what's happening is all it's doing is it's turning round like this, pushing that latch up and then pushing the rest of the mechanism to one side like that. You see? There's no warding, nothing needs to get around. There's no not, nothing that these little cutouts on the side of the key really mean. They have no significance at all, apart from maybe aesthetically. Um, all you need is something which is about that wide to lift the lock. Now I was looking at the key and I was thinking, hmm, that could work. So this might be a bit thick, but there's only one way to find out, which is take this off the bottle and see whether we can open a standard shed lock with a bottle of gin. Well, oddly, I just uh, put a screwdriver underneath this and just lifted it gently, thinking, oh, it's plastic, I'll be careful. And the whole thing just popped out, just held on by two little glue spots there. So I didn't break the bottle, which is good, best mess for me. And here is the latch lock, but it's just a little bit too thick. So the only thing I can do is to see if I can grind it back a little bit to make it thinner. What's interesting about this is it is actually metal. I didn't expect it to be metal at all, but it is actually metal. Um, has this little groove on the underside to center it, I guess, on the um, uh, in the bottle, so it doesn't slip around, it locates where it should be. Um, but it's got a little line of glue running down there. But yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll grind it down a little bit, clean it up on this side and just see if we can't uh, get it to, to work. I'm sure we can. So I wanted to modify this as little as possible. Clearly you can't use it straight off the bottle, but I ground out just a little notch here. If you look at the uh, standard key, you've got a little collar here. So that notch is about the same depth as this collar. And just the tip of the key there, I just uh, ground it down a little bit as well. You can probably see just that much. My hands are absolutely filthy from doing it. I don't know what metal this is. It's possibly some kind of aluminium. It tended to um, clog up the the teeth in the um, files. So yeah, but does it work? Does it work? <laughs> yeah, it does. That's kind of cool, isn't it? So we, um, we we with probably about five minutes work, and it isn't very nice work admittedly is a bit rough but probably about five minutes work we've taken a key off a gin bottle and we're now opening and closing our shed with it <laughs> oh dear well that was a little bit of fun i hope you enjoyed that video and i'll see you all next time